Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover Adobe Premiere Pro uh, Creative Cloud version. Um, this should also cover the CS6 um, version as I think a lot of the stuff has kind of stayed the same. Um, this tutorial is basically going to cover the introduction to uh, the software, the interface, and just simply importing in uh, an organization uh, of files. Um, so just starting off, uh, whenever we start up, we're going to get uh, a new project um, w uh, window. And I'm going to leave all of the settings here as just the default. Um, I'm going to change my location. So my location is going to be where I end up saving everything. Um, so I've just made a folder on my desktop. If I come to the desktop here, we'll see that I have a project folder for test project, uh, which I just made a folder called test project and I'm going to save uh, everything that I do in here and you can say that <clears throat> you can see that it's got uh, auto saves that will be saved from Premiere Pro and it also has um, some preview files so I'm just going to select this folder and this is going to be uh, the folder that I have uh, for all of my stuff and I'll end up making all of my videos uh, that I'm going to use and all my audio and any graphics or anything like that and I'll put them in this project just to keep all my projects together otherwise it gets very tedious to uh, say if I have my files stored on my videos folder and I'm uh, I end up taking this project somewhere else I have to make sure I grab those and I have to relink things and that becomes kind of tedious so I like to keep everything within the project folder um, so what I'm going to do is now give my project the name. So since I'm just doing this as a test, I'm going to call it test. Uh, and I'm going to say OK. It's going to ask if I want to rewrite over. This is because I've already kind of went through and created a test folder just to make sure my settings are going to work uh, before the recording. <clears throat> so whenever I do this, I'm going to get the uh, interface to pop up. And uh, anytime I'm in one of the active panels, I'm going to see it highlight blue. Um, and the interface has changed a little bit from what I'm used to. Uh, I typically have my tools up top here in my project uh, set up here, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is since this is how it uh, comes. Uh, and I'm kind of crazy about things lining up, so I'm just going to have that like that. Um, but right now, there's nothing in our project. There's no timeline, no sequences, no video, audio, anything of that sort. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to File, I'm going to say New, and I'm going to do a new sequence. We've already got a new project that we're working in. So I'm going to create a new sequence. This is going to basically be our timeline. And I've got a bunch of presets here that I can kind of choose from. Now I will typically stick with uh, two types of um, presets. I will either stick with the HDV, uh, which is your high definition video, or your DV NTSC. This would be for kind of an older style um, uh, SD um, settings. So these will be our old standard and wide widescreen settings for 720 by 480. Uh, but we're going to, I'm just going to do this one in HDV. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do mine at uh, 30 frames a second. So that means for every second of video I've got 30 frames that occur within that second and it'll be a 1080p so we can see here that the resolution is going to be right there um, and I do have a 29.97 uh, frame drop so it's not gonna it's pretty much 30 frames a second for what I'm gonna be using it for uh, and then down here at the bottom I'm going to name my sequence so this sequence is gonna be my main timeline so I'm just gonna call it main timeline and I'm gonna hit OK I can't reach my OK button there because I'm kind of got a zoomed in monitor here. So now we can see main timeline, the sequence shows up here. So this sequence now populates over here. So we can see main timeline is this timeline. Now that we've done that, we've got another part of the interface. So I'm going to go through the interface and just kind of explain what things are and where they're located. Um, so up top here, uh, we have our source. Currently, we have no clips. Um, we don't have any video in here. If I clicked on a video, it would open up here. Uh, if I drag it into my timeline, it'll show up in the timeline window uh, or timeline viewer that's over here. Um, but sticking to the top here, since there are no current source video clips, uh, this is going to be blank. Um, 
Next to this, we have if, uh, the effects controls. This all has to do with, uh, which you can see, um, normally there'd be here, but there's nothing selected, so I can always come back to that. And the audio clip mixer, this is where I uh, can control some of the volume of that clip. Um, so I'm just going to leave that as is. Down here, I've got my media browser, which I'm, uh, this is just grabbing stuff off of my computer. Um, but under project test, I've got uh, my main timeline, uh, and that's it. So if I right click in here, I've got a couple of options. New bin, new search bin, new item, import, and find. So in here, I'm gonna create a new bin. A bin is basically a folder. So I can create a bin, and I'll call this timelines, or sequences, whatever you wanna call it. I say timeline, timelines. That's not how you spell words. Timelines. I should really close Photoshop so we don't keep getting dings. All right, timelines. So, so what I can do with timelines here is I can uh, take my main timeline and I can click and drag it in. And now this falls under timelines. So it's just a way that I can kind of organize things. I can create another new bin. And typically this is something that I do at the beginning of all edits that I do. I'll have a videos folder. When I, when I hit enter, it's going to go down through all of them, so I could name them all at once. I'm going to make another bin for, let's say, sounds. And it's going to automatically organize these alphabetically as well. Do another new bin. Let's say this one will be for music. I don't really have anything to populate these with. And then uh, do another one for uh, images. So if I'm going to do a large edit, these are all things that I might end up importing in. Um, and so let's say I've got a video. So uh, for importing in my video, um, and I'm not sure that's necessary that I select this. I know it used to not be in older versions, but uh, it would always import it in down here, and I have to click and drag it in. But I'm going to highlight it, right-click on it, and go to Import. And now I can import in different file types. Um, so I'm going to just go to my videos folder, I'm going to go to just some of my control delete tutorials, and I can see them here. These are MP4 format, uh, and I will do, let's see, this is one of my uh, other videos. So I'll open that up, it's going to import it in, and now if I drop down videos, I can see that I have introduction to 3D, which would be 3D Studio Max interface. Um, so I have this video now, and if I double click this, now in my sources, why am I not seeing video there? Oh, there it is, okay. So I double click this, it will pop up in my source. This is not This is the raw format here, it doesn't mean I can edit it. So I can kind of drag through the timeline here and see that video end up playing. Another thing you might see is this, is an, um, this ends up bouncing up and down. This is where my sound level is, uh, which means that um, if I play through here, it is selected. I can see that right now it's going to rotate. My peaks just like the icon my audio shows, are. use selection so center. This becomes so it's really creating hard. a center point between. It's probably hard to hear me talking over me, um, but that's now showing up in the source window here. Um, but what I can also do is take this. I can click and I can drag it into my timeline. Okay, the clip does not match the sequence settings, change the sequence settings. So when I record these, I record these at a different file size uh, than what I currently set this size up for. Um, I'm going to leave always ask check there just so I have that. So I'm going to say sure. Let's have it change the sequence settings so that it fits the video I'm bringing in. Just in case I chose the wrong settings. Um, and so now I can scrub through the timeline here. And I'll see my sound obviously but I have my video in here. So this opens up some of the other things, like if I click on this video, it'll highlight. Now if I go to effects controls, I've got different types of controls here for changing what this video does from the position, scale, and rotation of the video within my viewer to its opacity. So if I want to take it all the way down to zero, you can see I just have a black background there so if I do that, it's going to become transparent, obviously. Um, 
time remapping. Uh, this is if I want to speed up and slow the video. I'm not going to mess around with a lot of these. And right now, if uh, I hit play, Max interface. Um, it's going to be a brief overview. I can see that my audio is hitting here uh, between uh, 12 and 18 uh, decibels, um, which which is fine. We don't want it to go up too high to zero or else it's going to be um, crackling and things like that. So I could control the volume from here to change the volume of uh, my video that's in the timeline. So looking in the main timeline here, we have our time code up here. This tells us where we are in the video. So currently we are 13 seconds and 17 frames. So we go frames, seconds, minutes, hours. Um, and then we have the slider here, so I can click and drag this to move through the timeline. Uh, and we can see the time cone represented on here. And we can see that this is one minute, zero seconds, and zero frames. And if I scrub through here, oh, I just clicked on it, sorry. If I click and drag on it, or scrub, I can see the time counting up there, and every time it gets to 29 and it rolls over to where it would be 30 frames it'll go to a new uh, second so that's what I was talking about the 30 frames a second these are just a couple of um, different things that you can do with the timeline so I can have things if I turn on snap actually if I turn it off but currently it's set to snap so that means if I have two video clips the ends of them if I have like a start and an end of one they'll snap together and you can just kind of um, look over some of the things here. If you highlight over icons it's nice because it'll kind of tell you what it is. Um, so we have linked selection so that's if we have um, currently if I select the video it also selects the audio track. So if we look here um, down the side here we've got V1 which is video track 1, video track 2, video track 3. And if we look next to that um, we can have them either sync or not sync, so sync with the audio or not. Next to there we have, uh, if I turn off the little eye, it's going to make it so I can't see it up there. Um, and then I can lock it so I can't do anything to it, and you'll see these little uh, lines go through it to let me know that it's locked. Down here I've got my different audio, and right now the uh, audio also has the same ideas, uh, I can mute the track so I can't hear it, so if I do that and I play through, I now don't hear it. I can also solo this track, so if I only want to hear the audio from this one track, I can solo it, which I don't have any other audio, so that doesn't really make sense to do that right now. Um, but what I was saying about this linked selection is whenever I select my video, it also selects the audio. If I turn that off, I can select just the video and just the audio. This isn't always ideal, that's why it's by default turned on. And the reason that's not ideal is um, if I start moving my video around and not my audio, everything's going to get out of sync, so I want to make sure to do that. Next to that I've got Add Marker. So Add Marker is good for making chapter points and things like that, especially if you're going to do like a DVD or something to that effect. But it also makes it easy to kind of set positions um, in your timeline. So Let's say I go to 30 seconds. Let me just type in 30. And if I set a marker here, add marker. I did that. I don't see anything. Let's try it again. Add marker. Oh, okay. And I can call this whatever. Let's call it chapter one. And I'm going to just say okay. There's my marker. Hmm. Add marker. I hit OK. Typically they'll show up up top here. Normally I just right click and do um, mark in or um, uh, add marker this way. Let's try that and see if that works better for me. And marker. Unless it's not showing the markers. Hmm. Oh well. 
I'm going to skip over that because I seem to be having either something's not showing up or I don't have something set up to show them, but uh, I'll move on. But basically, that's what markers are used for. I don't typically use them very often. Uh, the most that uh, I'll use them is um, if I'm going to make a DVD chapter, which I typically, I'm going to do that in Adobe Encore anyway, so I won't even do that um, in Premiere. Um, and then we have the Ooh, timeline display show clip markers. Yeah, those are set to on. That's very strange. I'm not sure why it's not showing up. Um, but um, the settings here I can turn on to show keyframes. I don't have any keyframes uh, currently active here, so that's not going to show up. Show waveform. This is with our audio. So uh, I've got these, um, the ability to click and drag here to show more um, of my view. So I can see the waveform here of my audio. The waveform just means uh, it's showing me uh, the high points in my audio and the low points of my audio. And it's basically, oh look, there's my markers. Ooh, that's weird. Okay, so they were showing up. Maybe just because I'm not zoomed in. Uh, that's all it was. Okay. That's weird. Normally it would display there anyway. Oh, at least I figured that out now. Because I was feeling stupid. Uh, Alright, so anyway. Um, lost my train of thought. Uh, so I can show different things here from having the waveform on, uh, showing the audio name as well, um, showing the thumbnail, which I don't really like having that on. It's good whenever I'm editing the video and I want to see my clips, but... Um, when I'm zoomed in, sometimes it can take up space that I don't want to see. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, that's basically the timeline and most of the settings for the timeline. Right next to our timeline, we have our different tools that we can go through. So our tools, uh, we have the select tool, which I've been using. Uh, I have my track select uh, forward. So right now, I've only got the one track in here. I've only got one set of video. If this was cut up a bunch, uh, which I'll show in a second on how we do that, I could basically click and select everything from this point over. Same idea with this one, except for this one works backwards. I can click everything from there back. Uh, ripple edit tool. So um, I don't really remember using this one very much. Um, but this allows me to move large uh, groups or one section of things over. I can also ripple edit by selecting um, blank areas and deleting those. Um, rate stretch, that's if I wanted to make my video play slower and I don't really want to do that. Um, next to that we have the razor tool. So this is what's really good for editing. So this is how I could cut up different parts of my video and cut things out. So if there was a section I didn't want, I could click that and hit delete and I'll remove it. Um, I'm going to go through and just click a couple other areas like that. And so now I can see I have this space here. If I select that space and I delete, I'll get rid of that gap that's in there as well. So now I've cut up my audio. Here where I was talking about select forward, I can move everything that's here forward. Same idea for backward. Move everything that's here. Oh, that was back. Sorry. Everything here forward, back. Or I can select a section from here back. That's how that was working. Um, I can, well, so I can pan through here as well. I know I'm skipping over a couple of things and I can zoom in and out with this. And if I hold the Alt key, I can zoom uh, outward. I can also use the um, handles on each end of here to either scroll or zoom in and out on something. And I'd want to kind of center this on whatever it is uh, that I was trying to zoom into. And that's it for the basic tools. As far as editing, or not editing, as far as uh, the effects, because there is an effects area here, I also have info. So if I select 
uh, a certain clip, I can see info on that clip from the start point to the end point. So the start one of this one starts at 39.06. Um, so next I'll go over to the effects tab. So the effects tab is where I can get into different sort of audio effects audio transitions so if I wanted the audio to transition in and out um, which means that if I wanted to blend between two audio clips uh, next to that we have video effects um, so if I want to make the video blurry if I want to uh, adjust any of the color or contrast levels things of that nature that would all be in adjust color correcting so if I want to you know change one color to another color I can do that um, so that's basically video effects. I mean, you can do a whole video on just video effects. Video transitions, um, most of the time I'm going to be sticking to just dissolves for dissolving from one video to another, which means that uh, right here, if we watch, so I'm going to hit play. Let me zoom in. So I'm going to hit play on here, and we'll see the video It's jump. basically a new open uh, save. It's kind of hard to see the jump there. Let me play between here. See That's if this is what I call it, but jump. Um, it's basically that is whenever we're saving. Yeah. So there we can see a straight cut. It cuts from one scene to the other scene. If I wanted to have a transition, I would use a dissolve, and I'd probably do a cross dissolve usually. And I can just put that in between there. So now when it goes from one to the next, it's basically that is whenever we're so saving see a transition, it crossfades from one video to the next. I could do the same idea with the audio. I'm just gonna do constant power. It's basically that is whenever we're saving so files, something I hear it transition from one to another. It's weird hearing the audio uh, of me transition over another part of me, but um, that's kind of how that works. Um, all right, so that takes us through most everything that we see here at the bottom. Um, so moving into the uh, program window here, um, we've got again the time uh, time code here. I've got different uh, types of zoom. So I do zoom to fit. So if I end up making, oh, if I end up dragging this out to make it, the window bigger, my video gets bigger. And typically, I like to work on multiple monitors and just have this. Uh, panel here take up one entire mod monitor so I can see what I'm editing. But I can switch it to 10% of the size of the video, which would get really tiny. And I could set it to 100%, which is going to be huge and doesn't really fit on here. So I'd have to actually use the scroll bars uh, to be able to see any portion. That's good if you want to zoom in for fine detail, but I just leave it at fit. Over here we have our uh, quality, our playback resolution. So if I set it to full quality, which we're not going to see whenever it's this small, but if I change it to a quarter quality, let me zoom in, uh, you're not going to see a huge difference here. Let me scrub through and see if that changes. So as it plays, 3D the playback Max is going interface, to switch um, to the lower quality. And if I set it at full quality, it's going to be a brief overview. It'll play through the timeline. At full quality, and you can see by default it's set to half. I can. You can uh, see. Tell you where some. Now, if this is set to fit, and I some of do the things this. are. Um, this is mostly so I can see the difference between a couple of different takes or scenes, and I can cut those sections out, and move those around. So, that's what we have there. And um, trying to think what else. I mean for a basic overview of the interface of where everything is kind of located, that's about it. Um, uh, basically I've covered everything as far as the interface. We haven't gone really through uh, you know saving and uh, import. Well we did import some uh, piece of video footage but um, that's it for the very basics uh, of this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it uh, to be helpful and if you like this video please give me a like uh, share and uh, subscribe and all that good stuff and uh, thanks for watching